everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Corporatainment Podcast. I am your host, Amora Brown, and today we have a super awesome guest on the show today. He is a performer professional basketball player. Now he's an art director and overall extremely talented student of life. His name is Gregory Plater. Gregory, thank you for being on the show today. Awesome to have you. Hey, Amora. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. (laughs) Okay. So, you know, I got to ask you, starting off in professional basketball, what kind of influenced you to be interested in art direction? Those are kind of, in my opinion, or from what I think right now, it's kind of two opposite things on the spectrum. Are they, or what What kind of made you want to get into art direction after having many years of doing professional basketball? Yeah, I think it, it to the to the average person or someone who doesn't know both areas, it definitely would seem like there's no um, connection or correlation. But uh, in basketball, a lot of a lot of what we do is about self-expression and the amount of time that you spend uh, training and honing your craft and understanding how you want to present yourself um, as a player is is influenced by a lot of different things. So for me. I was always influenced by music and pop culture and and film and comedy, um, and along with obviously the the amazing players that I grew up watching. So as a as a point guard, it's super important to be able to understand what's happening around you, and you also operate as an extension of the coach. So you have to develop a style of communication, um, and then also like how you dress, the kind of shoes you wear, the kind of swagger you have. There's a certain taste you develop. And so with art direction, it's a similar thing where you are sort of the the middle person where you're able to communicate with a lot of different kinds of people, a lot of different creatives and be strategic and also um, have a plan, you know, based on what the the problem is you want to solve. So say you want to solve this certain problem, you have to develop a, a, a visual for it. You're, you're bringing the taste, you're bringing the, the feeling, the mood, the sound, you know, like who's going to be involved. And so I think that, yeah, when you when you play basketball, as much as it doesn't seem like it, we're watching all these sports documentaries, sports movies. We hear these mm-hmm. stories. We, we meet people in different situations. I've traveled to different countries because of basketball. Mm-hmm. And it's allowed me to, to develop like a, a global view on how uh, life operates. And so when, I, when I'm in art direction, as I'm learning, I'm seeing the experiences that I've had are really influencing the work I do. And so that shows. So I develop my own style so people recognize when they see my work. Okay, that's Greg. Yeah, like that's that's super cool. Like you're the first person that I've ever met that has that perspective. So it's really cool to like hear it and just kind of be educated on it as well too. Now, nice. I like that I was looking at your website and I was looking at your Instagram and I was just like, this is this is dope. And I know you created your own blog um, or co- your company called intellectual athlete which is extension of your own personal brand and we're just trying and where you're trying to go in life right and in our previous chat which people weren't aware of but i I remember i spoke to you earlier you know to me you described it as what black mamba was to kobe bryant and (laughs) and i wanted to kind of talk a little bit about that why did you create it and where do you where do you hope to see it go 10 years from now (laughs) Well, Intellectual Athlete is really, it's more of less of a company, but more of an extension of myself at this point. Um, it's its sort of a way that, for me to express myself, because like I mentioned before, as, as, a, as an athlete, you have a lot of people who ask you about your journey. You have a lot of people who have their own perspective on what influences you. And there are a lot of stories that are told around that same narrative when a lot of the time, those those narratives and those stories that are shown aren't super realistic they're sensationalized and also uh the amount of people that i know doing really cool things not just in athletics but just overall uh, my my friends are doing really cool stuff i always have a lot of people asking me for updates on other people and so uh around the time when donald trump was uh the last election i would say and and you know there's a lot of turmoil with you know trump and um that election a lot of 
people were were using their voice and I felt like okay I need to right. find a platform to use my voice and do it in a mm-hmm. way that's not just me you know saying how I feel but more like how can I bring other voices into the conversation but do it from my that's lens cool. so I can be the the bridge for other people to go through and then you know when you're doing that you develop your own style you develop your own you know it it, it kind of evolves into something and I felt like okay yeah. I think this will turn into you know, me just expressing creativity, then it's like me telling stories, me highlighting others. And it's it's something that'll evolve over time. It's not set in stone what it is. But uh, yeah, it's really, like I said, what Co- people, you know, know Kobe for, they knew Kobe for was Mamba mentality. And there was a whole set of, you know, there's a standard, there was fundamentals, there was a foundation and something that came to mind when you heard that. And it took time to build. And so that's the same thing with me is like with intellectual athlete, I'm, I'm just building uh, the way that people can perceive how I am in the world and understand me deeper, but then also see like there's so many other people that have influenced me, and I want to make sure that that those inspir- the inspiration points come to life. Wow, that's super dope! Like, very creative of you. I I really admire that. Like, I hope I don't know. I don't even know. I'm trying to just chew on that really because it's <laughs> like it's a different form of art than what I'm used to. I'm more on like the performing art, performing arts side. And you're literally more on the side of like creative art with the mind type of thing. What kind of advice would you give to someone who is working a nine to five job and maybe come from a non-traditional background based off your experience? What have you learned along the way? I mean, in a way, you're kind of designing your own life, right? So Mm -hmm. what advice would you give to someone who is kind of afraid to design, you know, their own, I guess, career in that way to kind of step outside their comfort zone, outside of structure? What advice would you give to them about, you know, and, and obviously you can only give this perspective based off your experience. So how has your experience helped mold you to who you are now? I know I, I think, asked a bunch of questions. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's fine. I think that the best way to go about exploring your passions is to, first of all, figure out what you're passionate about. You know, I think before you start moving, you want to know where you're going. And I think that takes, like, I took a lot of time to really think and explore a lot of different areas. I, you know, I was coaching. I tried holistic nutrition. I worked in tech. I've... Um, I've done nonprofit jobs. I've done so many different things and I've asked a lot of questions. I've talked to a lot of different people based on interests. So it's like I had, I'm very curious minded. So I want to know kind of what different career paths are like, what different avenues of expression are like, and what can I do? What could I do to really be happy expressing myself as a creative in life? So that's where I was looking like, okay, I knew I wanted to be creative. So I pinpointed that, you know, so I went one level in. And then the next point was like, okay, well, what part of the creative do I want to be involved in, right? And then I was looking at illustration, and then I was looking at graphic design, and you know, like, do I want to paint? Do I want to do like what? I'm open. I want to do whatever makes me feel right. And I think I wasn't making that decision just because of what I thought. I was really exploring and asking questions to learn more. And then as you learn more and you figure out a point, you know, I, I've, I've found some really cool people who helped me understand where I wanted to go and the skills that I had that would translate to certain careers. And I came across art direction because it it took a while. It wasn't just something that I was like, oh, I want to do art direction. When I first finished basketball, I didn't know anything about what careers were out there really. Um, And it just, it was, it's an exploration point. So I would say, don't be discouraged if you don't know exactly what it is, but explore and learn, go on YouTube, ask questions, go to, uh, you know, online events, just explore what's out there. Yeah, network with people and network. figure out what people are doing. And then once you figure out what people are doing and then you see yourself in that, then you can sort of assess, you know, what might, you know, feel good for me. And then when you figure that out, you start to just do stuff on the side. You do stuff at home. You, you know, I'm just constantly researching, constantly doing side projects and then um, reaching out to people on LinkedIn and just always learning, always being open minded. And as soon as you get that goal, just like reverse engineer the process and then follow each step to get there. Yeah. So I think part of getting that direction is talking to strangers. So 
one reason why I started this podcast is because I thought it was really important to kind of talk to people who I don't know that I admire and that I think are smart and get their tips and guidance and advice, even just for a little while. Right. And then you can apply that. And that kind of gives you some inspiration of, you know, where to get started, especially where to get started now, because it's really easy to go online and Google things, but that process might be outdated. But mm-hmm. as you go out and you talk to people, it's really easy to figure out what didn't work and why certain processes don't work anymore like they used to and what's relevant now. So uh, that's just some advice I want to share to people who are working their nine to five job and and just don't realize that there's a lot more resources around you than what you might think, especially people sitting next to you like that are really interested in, you know, creative things, too. I think more people than we know are interested in and have knowledge in the creative uh aspect of things Mm -hmm. yeah i would add to that and say i think it's important to to not only explore things that you're interested in but explore things that you might not think you're interested in and understand what you don't like and what you don't want Uh, for me i i try to even if someone might not be the person that i'm so attracted to i still want to hear their perspective and sort of see like you can steal gems from people that you don't really vibe with and that can help you. So it's just being super strategic about the places you find information, like really broaden that scope. You know, We really talked about that too, about adapting the mindset to take gems from people who you might not vibe with very much. And I think that's a skill in itself to be able to take what's useful and leave what's not. Because with that mindset, you'll always be able to learn something. And this could be somebody who you don't like, but they'll give you, I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a good example, but I can't really think of a good example right off Mm -hmm. the bat. But I think that's a really important mindset. It's just setting boundaries of what your own morals are, but still being open to hearing something that could be useful for you. Um, Because, I mean, you could learn it and then change it or you can learn it and adapt to it. So that's really Mm -hmm. cool. Um, Yeah. So. I know you gave me advice in the past and we talked about this, if Someone says, how can I help you? You want to be specific in one thing. So what I understood from that, and then I want to hear you kind of elaborate on it as well, too, is it's cool to have all these different interests, like about where to start, right? It's cool to have a whole bunch of different interests. But for example, I might say, oh, I want to be a singer, dancer, actress, model, poet, clothing designer, have on TV show, which is true. But if I'm not talking to someone uh, who understands all of that, it might be overwhelming to them. It'd be better off just to tell someone, Hey, you know, for you to know, I'm working on my own podcast, you know, Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe you can, you know, help me with that. Or maybe I can give you some tips on that to kind of like succinctly focus in on one specific thing when you are, uh, connecting with people about your passions. And that, that could be an easier way to, uh, work together, but maybe you can explain it better. (laughs) Uh, yeah, I think it's like you give a person a, a starting point because I mm-hmm. think when people do, people don't understand how much they know. It's like that's hard to think, oh, I'm this person that has these resources because people are very, you know, they're humble and they're shy and they're, they are they want to make sure they're not leading you down the wrong way and making you think mm-hmm. something that's not there. So they're going to start <laughs> from the small place and you say, hey, like, I know you have your own podcast. Like, can you tell me about how you got that started? And they'll say, well, where do you want to start? You know, do you want to know about? the video recording, the audio, and then you give them somewhere to start and then it, it will grow because then they'll say, oh, okay, I remember this. And then they'll yep. keep giving you things. And then next thing you know, they're saying, hey, I got a buddy who actually does the sound part. Let me connect you with them. And then they, or they send you a few links, right? And they tell you a book to read. And so that's, it doesn't mean that you can't, you know, want to learn more, but give someone a place to start and then it'll, it'll, you know, grow from there. Yeah, definitely. So now, Greg, I have a question for you. And it's a completely random question. I don't know if you can hear this. It's a completely random question. Mm -hmm. And it's from one of my previous interviewees. And he is the creator of Diamond Dragons, which is very similar to think about it like Star Wars, Star Wars, or like Lord of Rings type, Lord of the Rings type, or but like a hero's journey, right? Mm -hmm. And if you haven't seen it, you guys should check it out. It's on YouTube. His name is Michael Cariato. And this was his question for you. Very similar to what I asked earlier, but now I need you to kind of dive into it. 
What is the kind of advice that you would give, not necessarily to your younger self, but for people who are getting involved in art direction and they're creating their own career into art direction. So maybe they're not going about it uh, formally. And not just like that advice, but the thought process that you would suggest that they adopt for for kind of going into this like very uncertain like field, not uncertain field, but like just without structure. So they didn't go to a university and they're thinking about getting into this. Would you suggest that they go to university or, or not? Um, that's kind of where the question is going. And he was saying like, for example, in the advice you give, it could be something that you didn't realize that was a good idea, but turned out to be a really good idea. Like, Ooh, I first thought this was a bad idea for me to take these steps, but later on found out that it was actually one of the best things that I could have done. So tell us like, if you have any advice or just guidance or anything in that way, that's what Matthew wanted to know. Okay. <clears throat> Let me think about this. <laughs> Cause mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm still Chew on in, it. I, uh, <laughs> I, I figured out, you know, I, th- I think it starts with, uh, figuring out how to develop who you are. So mm. I think the most important part is having a perspective. And this is stuff that I've learned. I've, it's not stuff that I've just come up with, but I, I've i learned that the, the steps that I was taking happened to be right. So I'm just going to say like, okay, this is what I've done. It's not the all be all. There are many different ways to do it. Mm. Uh, you can go to university if you feel, you know, if you really think you need that. Uh, I'm the type of person, I like to move fast. So for me, I felt like um, I could, you know, scrap together some YouTube tutorials. I could talk to different friends and people who are creative who could give me insight, you know, on the ways to skip steps. Uh, but I really <laughs> say, you know, when I say skip steps, I just mean like to do it faster than what school could give me. Right, right, like, right, right, right. I'm, I'm, I'm like a two a days type person. I'm reading at eleven at night. I'll stay up till three in the morning. Like you got to put in work. So that's the number one thing is like you got to be ready to work regardless of if you go to school or not. And I would say for art direction, for what I've, what I feel like has helped me is I'm like endlessly curious and I'm endlessly throwing myself into situations where the perspectives and point of views aren't mine. And Mm -hmm. I have to adjust and understand the way that things are happening from somebody else's uh, angle. Right. So it's like I'm developing a lot of empathy and understanding of someone else's experience. And then at the same time, it's like when I expose myself to all different sorts of mediums of expression and thought and learning and uh, ways of life, I then can like draw in different references and influences that help me build my work. And I'm always mm-hmm. leaning on watching other creatives and seeing what they do uh, creatively and looking at things that inspire me. And I collect them and I'm always researching. I'll go on Pinterest and be on there for hours. I'll Save. go <laughs> and look at a film and I'll, you know, it's like, I, I see a, I hear a song and I'm shazamming it. I'm not just listening to it and letting it go. I'm shazamming it and then seeing that. And then I might try and figure out who did the album cover art. And then I want to know who's the producer. And then I might see what movie that song was played in. Right. So then it's like, you're finding this, like this, these dots are being connected where you're creating a whole ecosystem on mm. how something was created. Where if I see a, a photograph, I want to know, okay, what song might come to mind? Or it's like this, I could see this on a, on a medium article or in the New York times and, and different things spark your, your curiosity. And then it leads you somewhere. And I think that's my personal um, journey is like, okay, I was inspired by these things. They made me feel this and I want to express it in this way. And then to do that, I have to lean on other things to help me put it together because I, and, and all those collective things help me figure out my own style and taste and vision. Right. But it was, everything's influenced by life. So by traveling around the world, by having friends of all different backgrounds and cultures and, you know, uh, lifestyles and occupations and talking to people of all ages. I love talking to older people. I love talking to young people. Just like really diversifying your experience. And then like once you get places, don't be discouraged in taking like an internship or taking um, a lesser role or you know, like you got to be humble. So I've been okay with taking internships. I've been okay with learning when somebody's ready to. And, and, you know, you just, you put things on the fly. Like there's no set plan on how to do it. 
you just have to be determined to figure it out and right. be ready for a lot of like unknown circumstances. Like when I'm, when I don't know, I keep asking different people until I figure it out. And I ask a bunch of different perspectives on one thing, because mm. if I just ask one person how they do it, that's the only way I might see it. But if I ask six people, then I can collectively see, okay, where's the commonality between those? And I can really focus on those parts that everyone's kind of chiming in on or like really be observant to what they're saying and then come to that conclusion myself. It, it, it's a way to always stay curious. So if you're, how do I stay curious? I'm not naturally a curious person. Well, uh, you could start with, you know, surveying people and asking them all different perspectives of one question and kind of just chewing on that and, and diving into that. That's really cool. Thanks. Um, mm -hmm. Our last question is, what is a question that you would like to ask the next interviewee? I would say what is what is or who is the most unexpected uh, person or thing that inspired you to um, pursue what you're doing? Thank you for coming on the show, Gregory. Absolutely. I'm super happy to talk with you. I I um I'm really excited about what you're doing. I think the the way you're going about it, the energy you have and the the vision you have for yourself is really unique because when we spoke, I was like, "Wow, she knows what she wants to do <laughs> and she's confident." And I think it's really amazing that you have so much confidence to be yourself and to pursue your dreams and really just like go for it because a lot of people wouldn't do that. So thank you for doing what you do. Thank you for bringing your energy to the world and I think it's really needed. Thank you so much for coming on. And I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to share that with us, like a, a fresh perspective of something new about art direction. And it's coming from someone with a background in playing professional basketball, like something that, you know, it's something that is like a culture, like an American culture type of thing. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I didn't know very much about art direction. Um, so thank you for coming on and sharing sharing this. Where can we find you? and your work and how can we support you? Yeah. Okay. So my, my Instagram is at Greg Plater and my Twitter is, uh, at hoop underscore nerd, I think, or maybe it's hoop nerd. <laughs> it's one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, my website is Gregory Um, and I think that's about it. Oh, and, and Hey, for the professionals, add me on LinkedIn, um, Gregory yes. Plater on LinkedIn. And I would say one way to support me is just by by being open minded and curious and, and spreading love to different people and being open minded to learning about the experience of others. Because my mission is to open doors for other people who haven't had the mm -hmm. opportunities that I've had. And I understand that how important it is to just listen to somebody and to gravitate towards people who mm -hmm. are interested in you. Like that's been the biggest thing in my life uh, that's helped is like people who want to help me. I go and listen to them regardless of how you know they meet how much. Uh, success quote <laughs> that they've had in their career or what they do it's more about the energy they bring and people who really value you and want to give to you can help you more than anybody else so i'd say yeah mm. just lean into other people be a mentor like find a guide be a mentor um, <laughs> yep you know like just give to people and, and receive love and just be super super uh humble with everything you do and make sure that you're putting others first before yourself wonderful Thank you so much for coming on. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you. Take care. Bye.